Thank you, President Nikias, for your inspirational uh, words, which, which reaffirms the C-100's commitment to building common ground between the U.S. and China. At this time, I'd like to invite Stuart Kuo to the podium to introduce our new testimonials feature to tonight's program. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, well, let's hear it once again for our great honorees. You know, to bring the Trojans and Bruins together in our harmonious setting is really special. And I won't say where I went to school, although I did go to. Uh, I think this is a, a wonderful time. And uh, Dominic and Angie and I were talking about how often we go to banquets. And uh, a lot of people say great things about the organization. And you kind of walk out and you, you say to your uh, partner, gee, I wonder what they really do. Um, so we thought that for the first time, uh, we would feature three testimonials from a few of our partners who have benefited from our diverse programs. Uh, the committee, as Dominique said earlier, the Committee of 100 focuses on three core areas of education, diplomacy, and leadership development. In education, the Committee of 100 brings delegations of Americans especially thought leaders, to China. We believe that bilateral relations are strengthened by inviting leaders from business, community, and the media to go to China. Most of the delegation participants are first-time visitors to China. And through the committee's vast networks, the delegates receive a unique first-hand experience of China and the opportunity to meet visionaries who are shaping that country. Also in education, this, coming, this summer, we are launching the Wanchan Teaching Scholars Program. Program participants are science teachers who will travel to three cities in China on a theme-based study to explore new frontiers in clean technology and renewable energy. I'm sure they will come back with tremendous knowledge in their own schools here in California. And in Southern California, the Committee of 100 has convened the Mandarin in Schools Committee that holds an annual conference on promoting Mandarin learning in four school districts. In fact, the Committee of 100 has encouraged thousands of students and teachers to gain greater knowledge of Chinese language, history, and culture. In diplomacy, the C-100 conducts, conducts regular exchanges with senior government leaders in Washington, Beijing, and Taipei. In fact, in the last two years, we've had member delegations or conferences in Beijing, Hong Kong, and Taipei. These meetings provide an unparalleled opportunity for community, community, Committee of 100 members to learn about pressing issues. In turn, this knowledge helps to enhance U.S. policymakers and opinion leaders' understanding of U.S.-China relations and cross-strait issues. First-hand information from the greater China region is highly sought after as C-100 is a trusted source of information through its leader-to-leader -leader diplomatic efforts. And as you will hear in just a few moments, we also work with elected officials in the United States on major national issues that impact the Chinese and Asian American communities. Last but not least, in our leadership development, the Committee of 100 invites emerging leaders to meet our members in regional discussion groups or in mentoring relationships. The Leadership Development Initiative seeks to develop a robust pipeline of Chinese and Asian American leaders for all of our communities. Participants discuss their career goals and engage our members about professional prospects and challenges, but also how to better get involved in improving our communities. 
All regional program participants are also invited to a leadership summit, which we will have on Saturday, to discuss strategic issues with C100 members worldwide. So for example, in the New York region, we have held several Asian American women's leadership roundtables. In China, we have the Greater China Leadership Scholarship Program. And in Los Angeles, we have involved dozens of our members and literally close to 50 uh, mentees in talking about uh, their futures in both one-to-one -one and large group settings. So to introduce our first partner, let me introduce Michelle Kwan. Uh, many of you know Michelle ranks among the greatest figure skaters of all time, winning an unprecedented 43 championships throughout the world. In November 2006, Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice appointed Michelle as the first U.S. Public Diplomacy Envoy. In this capacity, Michelle travels globally to speak with young people about social and educational issues and leadership. In 2010, President Obama appointed Michelle to the President's Council on Fitness, Sports, and Nutrition, and that group advises the President on ways to engage, empower, and educate all Americans to lead healthy and active lifestyles. As a fellow C100 member and conference co-chair, Michelle Kwan will introduce our first testimonial speaker on C100's diplomacy program. Michelle, please come to the podium. Thank you, Stuart. Good evening, everybody. Uh, let me just start off by saying, ladies, you look beautiful. And gentlemen, you look handsome. Um, it is my distinct honor to introduce Congresswoman Chu, a fellow Southern Californian whose family, like mine, immigrated from Southern China. Dr. Chu was selected to the US House of Representatives in July 2009, representing California's 32nd District. As the first Chinese American Congresswoman in American history, her courage and perseverance have contributed to the advancement of Chinese American issues. She currently serves on the House Judiciary Committee and Small Business Committee. Representative Chu has also played a critical role in the House Resolution 282. The resolution expresses regret for the Chinese Exclusion Act that restricted the right, civil rights of Chinese immigrants and reaffirms Congress's commitment to protecting the civil rights of all people, not just Chinese, despite, regardless of race and ethnicity. As most of you know, diplomacy is one of the three core areas of the C-100 programs. C-100 is proud to recognize Congresswoman Chu's contribution and leadership in public diplomacy and for the important work that she does. At this time, I'd like to invite Representative Chu to the podium. Good evening. I just literally flew in from Washington, D.C., but I had to come, I had to come because of all the work that the Committee of 100 has done to bring together key influential leaders in the Chinese American community to make a difference. I had to come because in less than 22 years, you have filled a void becoming a respected national voice for the Chinese American community. Because of you, we have a voice that pushes for a productive relationship between the U.S. and China. Your annual public perception survey on U.S.-China relations has heightened awareness of this and the need to set the record straight when hysteria and stereotyping occurs. As recently as this year's Super Bowl, Michigan Senate candidate Pete Hoekstra put up an ad and obviously, American-born Asian women in a rice paddy with a coolie hat on 
rides on her bike to the camera and says gleefully in a fake Chinese accent, isn't it great that we get to steal your American jobs? Well, we know what hateful rhetoric can do. 30 years ago, right in that same state of Michigan, a young engineer, Vincent Chin, got his head bashed in with a baseball bat by two white unemployed auto workers who thought he was Japanese and blamed him for being out of work. Well, there was a time when Asian Americans might have been silent about Hulkstra's ad, but not this time. As chair of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus, I issued a statement denouncing the ad, demanding an apology, and went on CNN to do the same. The Michigan Chinese American community also mobilized. And finally, Hoekstra had to take down the ad. This was a triumph, and I'm comforted that the Committee of 100 will continue to press the issue of a fair and balanced view of U.S.-China relations. Because of you, we also have a voice to do something about the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882. Over a century ago, the Chinese came here in search of a better life, but they faced harsh conditions. They were called racial slurs, were spat upon in the streets, derided in the halls of Congress, and even brutally murdered. So in 1882, Congress passed the terrible Chinese Exclusion Act to prevent, <clears throat> prevent the Chinese from becoming naturalized citizens, from having the right to vote, and from immigrating. It took 60 long years, up until the year 1943, for this law to be repealed. But the trauma of the law left scars on the Chinese American community, splitting apart families and disenfranchising many. In fact, my own grandfather could not become a naturalized citizen. After my election, the major national Chinese American organizations, including the Committee of 100, came together to ask me to sponsor a bill for Congress to finally ex express its regret for the passage of the Chinese Exclusion Act. I agreed, and after much work, I'm proud to announce that in October, the bill passed the U.S. Senate, Senate unanimously with both Democrat and Republican support. Now, it must pass the House. So for House passage, we are making progress, in fact, very good progress, because of the dedication of hundreds of Chinese Americans across the country, many of them Committee of 100 members. Your member, Michael Lin, was one of the first to ask me to introduce this resolution. He's been a key leader in the coalition and practically directs our DC strategy. I can honestly say that without him, we would be nowhere. Your member, Frank Wu, Dean of Hastings Law School, has spent countless hours reviewing versions of the bill, being on conference calls and in community meetings, and even lending us law students. His academic expertise has been critical. And then there was the need to convince Congress members to co-sponsor the bill. And these were Congress members that had no idea about what had happened in history. In some cases, it's only persons of the caliber of those that are in Committee of 100 that can accomplish this. And so we had your member, Charlie Wu, uh, successfully get Democrat Howard Berman to co-sponsor. And we had John Chen, CEO of Sybase, and of course, your past chairman, participate. And the minute I told him about our efforts, he said, what can I do to help? Well, John used his incredible connections to bring key Republican Congress member, Chair of the Oversight and Government Committee, Daryl Issa, on board. And thus, we have very strong bipartisan support on the bill. It's been an inspiration for me to see enthusiastic Chinese Americans from across the nation visit their representatives all the way from Chicago to New Mexico, Texas, Oregon, and Maryland. And in Arizona, supporters met with Representative Trent Franks um, recently, chair of a key judiciary subcommittee, and he said that with a few small changes, he will move the resolution out of committee. With that, we hope to get this bill out 
on the floor and voted in by spring. I am so, so happy of the participation of Committee 100. And can we acknowledge Michael Lynn, Frank Wu, John Shan, and Charlie Wu. Can you please stand up and accept a round of applause from all of us for everything that you did? Well, with the Committee of 100, never again do we have to stay silent when there are injustices, stereotypes, or discriminatory laws. We can combat them, and we can show the enormous impact that Chinese Americans can make for positive change. Thank you for using your positions to help build mutual trust and understanding between the US and China, and to protect Chinese Americans here at home. Thank you, and have a wonderful conference.